Fast and efficient software is great. But without control, speed kills. Security provides the guidance systems. It lowers risk, increases reliability. I'm looking for the ones who know about security. The ones who advocate speed with control. These are the security champions. Hey, and welcome to another episode of The Security Champions, the show where we talk about all things IT security related. I'm Scott Moore, your host. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic is DAST, Dynamic Application Security Testing. What is it? Well, imagine trying to test the security of an application without having any knowledge of its inner workings or access to source code. That's exactly what DAST tools attempt to do. It's a black box approach to testing the app while it's running and imitating a malicious attacker, trying to find those things that an attacker would use to compromise the security of the app. Today, we're gonna to talk with the CEO of Probly about what are these DAS tools and what are the skill sets that you need to use them and how do you scale them out to larger teams and much more. If you're into security penetration testing at all, you're gonna to wanna to see this interview. So let's go. Good to have you on the show today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. So my name is uh, Nuno. I'm the CEO of Probly. Uh, Probly is a DAS scanner, Dynamic Application Security Testing Scanner. Um, I have a technical background. Uh, so before Probly, uh, I created and led an application security team in a telecom provider uh, for six years. Uh, so we are heavy users of DAS scanners back like in 2010. Uh, 2011 and so on, and uh, there was some stuff that got us frustrated while using those uh, scanners. And basically, in 2016, actually, my entire team and I we decided to quit to create Probably. So wow. we all resigned them on the same day. <laughs> they were not very happy, but they are customers. <laughs> so like uh, we left in a you know like landed yeah. on your feet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great. Well, you know our audience is mixed between all kinds of people in technology. Some are testers and some are in security. Uh, so we're branching out on this. Some people may not know the difference between a static tool and a dynamic tool. Can you specify what that means? What are DAS tools and how are sure. they different? Sure, so, so the, the static tool basically analyzes the code, so it needs access to the code and will analyze the code. Uh, so if your application is built um, with different components or has different components, you, you need to kind of um, uh, test or scan uh, the code of the different components isolated. Uh, if, you use, if you use different technologies as well, of course your uh, SAS scanner needs to be compatible with the technology that you're, that you're using. Um, the DAST on the other hand, so it's dynamic as, as the name implies, and, uh, and uh, you just point the scanner to the, the base URL of your application or API, and you click Start Scan, and basically what the scanner does is, like if you're scanning a web application, the first part is to crawl, to go, to find all the sections of the application, and then as it finds uh, endpoints, it passes them to the scanner to test, and the scanner basically injects uh, malicious payloads to try to trigger certain types of vulnerabilities, and then it analyzes the behavior of the application faced with those payloads. And that's pretty much how it works. Awesome. All right, for a DAS tool, um, what are the skill sets someone needs to have to use that? Is it somebody who's been in AppSec for a while, they're, they're used to doing penetration testing, uh, or is it the same skill set, or is it something unique? Um, no, I think the, it's the same skill set as uh, someone that belongs or that is part of an application security team. Um, uh, it's very important that the person that, that is part of an application security team knows about development, uh, knows how to, to code, basically. Uh, having that skill set is, is really important so that you understand not only the vulnerabilities, but like some nuances about the vulnerabilities and, and the risk they expose and so on. So having that background really helps. And I think it's actually pretty critical uh, for an AppSec uh, engineer to, to have development background. Um, other than that, you need to understand HTTP well, of course. Uh, you need to understand how the browser works, and that's pretty much it. 
Awesome. So um, as you as we dive into this, um, how would you scale a team to be able to do this in mass and larger companies? So I actually created an AppSec team back in 2010. Uh, we were uh, two. Um, on the other side, you had um, uh, 150 developers, more or less, uh, different teams. Uh, our team grew, of course. Uh, we were seven people at some point. Um, and of, the first thing, of course, that is more important is you need to understand uh, uh, your, um, what applications you have, of course, uh, and you need to understand uh, um, uh, the risk or, uh, of those applications or the sensitivity of those applications, if they, uh, if they are applications that are exposed on the internet or not, um, if they uh, have access to uh, customer data or not, and what type of data, all of that. You need to prioritize, you can't go everywhere at the same time. Um, and then you start, the best way is actually to point a dust scanner to those uh, applications because it's the easiest thing to do. You just point the scanner to the URL, you start scan and, and then you get the results. Whereas like with other types of scanners like SAST and so on, you need a lot more. You need access to the code, you need to talk to the, to the, to the dev teams um, and it's, it's always more complicated and also SAS scanners usually give a lot more noise. Um, so if you want to focus, focus on your most criti critical applications, uh, scan them first, and, uh, and go from there. How, how about the importance of getting it shifted left into the CI pipeline and getting it done early and often? Uh, how, how easy is that to do? It's uh, not difficult to be the first step, uh, but it would it should definitely be done uh, early on, as early as possible. Um, uh, the first step, you just want to have a grasp of the the security risk over the overall security risk of your uh, um, um, of all of your, your applications, um, and to get the sense of the business risk. And then after that, of course, you need to drill down and uh, start focusing on you know like implementing testing early on in the development phases because it's a lot easier to fix a vulnerability early on than having, having it in production and then suddenly you find something critical that needs to be fixed as soon as possible and uh, you go back to the, to, to the dev team and, and that process usually takes a lot longer. So where are we at currently in terms of DAS tools, complexity levels, what people are able to do with them versus where we think they're going over the next three years? Um, and what will be the impact of AI on these products? Uh, so, so today, um, a lot of the scanners uh, deal pretty well with more complex uh, applications, more modern applications. Um, so back in the day, like if you look back like 10 years ago, um, the crawler of the scanner, so the component that is re responsible to find uh, all the sections of the application um, struggles, struggle to um, crawl more modern applications, the, 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 the single page applications that is basically JavaScript and then the application calls an API in, in the background. Um, today, for instance, probably, probably Scrawler is usually very good at getting a good coverage of your, app, your application. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you are scanning a single page app or you know, like a more uh, you know, like old school app. Um, so that's where we are today. We start seeing some uh, work on trying to find um, uh, broken logic uh, vulnerabilities, uh, namely authorization issues. Um, but I think we are still in the very early days uh, of that. Uh, we're gonna see probably an improvement in that regard. And, um, and in the future, and go, going back to the AI question uh, that you asked, I think AI can provide a lot more context when you're testing those applications. Um, it's really important to understand where you are and the context of that particular page that you're testing. Uh, let me give you a very simple example. If you're scanning a page to change your password, it should ask for the current password and then the new password. Having that context is important because if it doesn't require for the current password, you have an issue right there sure. that it should report. So that context today is still difficult to get uh, for that particular case, of course, you could use some heuristics and you could get it done. But other similar cases, it's, it's a lot more difficult. And I think AI will help on that. I think it will also help um, 
on improving the efficiency of the tests themselves, uh, especially when it comes to scanning duplicate pages uh, and, and so on. Uh, imagine a site like CNN, where you have thousands of uh, news stories, right? Mm -hmm. The page that serves the news story is probably the same in terms of code, right? The only thing that is different is, is the story itself. So finding those duplicate pages uh, um, is, is, is critical to improve the efficiency or the time that it takes to scan the application. And I think it can help uh, on that as well. It can also help on the false positives part, so it can help in different fronts. Okay. So can you give me one example of where probably or some DAS tool uh, you had a big win, where you caught something uh, well before it, it caused a big problem uh, and how that worked? Can you give me sort of like the workflow or rundown? You don't have to mention any client names or anything. Sure, sure. Um, so there are two things, actually there are three things that we hear a lot from customers and, and people trying probably. Uh, one is easy to explain is, is, is our support team uh, that is very pro proactive um, and usually when something goes wrong, we are the first ones contacting the customer and say, hey, this didn't go right and you need to do this or that to fix it or we can do it for you. Uh, so that's one thing. The other two things are related to coverage, which we've been talking about. So one of our focus from the beginning was to build an excellent crawler that is capable of reaching all the sections of the application without a human intervention. Um, and uh, we spent a lot of time and we focused a lot on that. And that's actually something that we hear a lot from customers saying, hey, your scanner was able to reach that part and I've tried several other scanners and none reached that part. And um, a lot of times you also hear, we, you were the only one that found this critical vulnerability and the others didn't. And then when you analyze why, you come to the conclusion that it was because we actually saw that section of the application that we tested and the other scanners didn't reach that part of the application. So it was a coverage issue. And you see this a lot. And we, have, we want some customers just because of that. The one thing you don't find is what ends up biting you in the end, yeah. so that's interesting. Yeah, you, you can only test what you can see, right? Uh, so if, you, if your crawler doesn't find the section of the application, it's not gonna be tested, so no vulnerabilities are gonna be found. And we want some customers just because of that. And I was going to say the last thing is has to do with the quality of the results. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we suffered a lot from some of the issues uh, scanners have. One of them is definitely false positives and the time you waste validating all the vulnerabilities to make sure they are real um, and that you need to pass them to the dev team to fix. And uh, it was also one of our focus from the beginning is to report results or findings that are real, uh, so false positive free. Um, you can never say that you're like, you don't have any false positives at all, that's, that's impossible. But our p false positive rate last year was 0.06%, which is really, really low. And um, the way we do that for some types of vulnerabilities, we safely exploit the vulnerability in order to gather an evidence that shows that the vulnerability is real. And that evidence no, is not only good for us because we are 100% sure it's real, but also by giving back that evidence to the user, the user doesn't need to uh, spend time validating the vulnerability because they look at the evidence and like, oh, this is real. Right, it seems to me like coming from a performance engineering background, the biggest thing we look for is the analysis and the visualization of that analysis to weed out where the actual performance problem is. Seems like for security, visualization is always also important, but it's more about filtering out the stuff you don't need to see, so it really the, the truth rises, the real vulnerability rises to the top, is that yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. So if somebody wants to find out more about Probly, where can they go to check it out? Well, they can go to probably.com. Uh, we have a free forever plan, uh, so you can just sign up and start using Probly. And um, that's it. Awesome. Great discussion. For more information about both static and dynamic scanning methods, check out our website at thesecuritychampions.com. We've got videos out there that talk about the differences between the two and when to use them. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott Moore, and I'll see you on the next episode of The Security Champions.